Hello, welcome back, I hope. Uh, my name again is Mark Dighton. I'm the uh, Administrative Director of the Patent Office Exam course for PLI, uh, Practicing Law Institute. Um, this is the third in our series of five short lectures on careers for engineers and scientists in the field of patents. This one specifically is about where you find um, this kind of work. Uh, we've talked already about what the work is like in part two. Uh, we're going to talk more about agents, patent agents versus patent attorneys in the next lecture and the last lecture is uh, about uh, taking the exam, which you pretty much have to take if you want to be working in this field as an engineer or scientist. Um, uh, there's a very organized way by which patent attorneys are recruited and hired uh, by law firms and corporations, but sadly the same thing is not true of patent agents. One of the pluses if you decide to go to law school is that it will be very regimented and basically they will come looking for you. Um, that's rare for engineers and scientists. Not another question. Sometimes we will see firms and corporations that will come, you know, recruit on campus, um, but often you're going to have to go out and try to find this kind of work uh, on your own. There's not that many jobs in the field, um, um, and usually the law firms just will go kind of recruit on an ad hoc basis uh, when they need somebody. Um, um, but, you know, if you know who the major players are in the business world, uh, in your technical area, um, uh, you should keep an eye on their jobs website or maybe even reach out to them. Um, many of them will have patent agents working at the company um, or the law firm. Um, others will farm out, you know, other corporations will farm out their patent work to a law firm. But, you know, you can find out from the patent office website what law firms represent which companies in getting their patents. So if you know the company you're interested in, uh, you should be able to figure out which law firm generally represents them and get a job for the law firm, you know, writing uh, uh, patents for that corporation. Um, uh, patent law firms will often have recruiting people who will recruit their agents specifically. So if you're looking to get a job at a law firm, that's often uh, a little bit easier. Um, um, uh, you know, often th these law firms, you know, much different from when I graduated from law school when law firms were kind of a black box that nobody really knew who was inside except for the sort of big names. Now every law firm, especially in the patent field, uh, is going to have a website that will tell you who all their attorneys are and what their technical backgrounds are, what kind of corporations, you know, clients they handle, that kind of thing. And they're probably going to have their patent agents listed on the website. So you can go look there and see is there somebody there who I've got something in common with who I could reach out to and sort of ask about that. We'll talk about that a little bit more uh, a, a little bit later. Um, uh, if uh, you've got a particular city in mind, like, you know, I want to live in Salt Lake, I don't want to go anywhere else, you can also search the Patent Office website to figure out what patent law firms are uh, in that city. This is easier to do with the small cities, really, because you go looking for Chicago, New York, Boston, San Francisco, whatever, you're going to have way more people than you can hope to deal with, really. But smaller cities, this really works out well. And, and those smaller cities are often looking for somebody who has ties to the city, who really wants to be in that city, because not everybody wants to be in Salt Lake City. Um, um, uh, so, um, you know, but, you know, you go look at the law firm's websites and kind of see what clients they represent, um, uh, you know, and, and, you know, they're probably not going to be terribly interested in you if you've got a degree in chemical engineering and they're mostly doing software patents. So use those websites to really gain a lot of information about what the firm does in general and if there are any particular people there at the firm, attorneys or agents, who you can reach out to to sort of, you know, get an in with the firm to find out more about how they hire, all those kinds of things. Um, so we're going to, we should, we should define some terms. We're going to get into this a little bit later in more uh, uh, detail. But we're going to define some terms if you're looking at job postings. Um, there's really only two terms um, that are kind of legally defined, and so you can be guaranteed uh, what they're looking for in, in an ad. Uh, th that's patent attorneys and patent agents. Um, uh, you know, you can't call yourself a patent agent until you've passed the patent office's registration exam. And you're really not supposed to call yourself a patent attorney until you pass the patent office's registration exam and at least one state uh, bar exam. Um, but law firms and corporations will often hire engineers and scientists before they pass the exam. The trouble is that there's really no agreed upon job title for those people. 
Um, every law firm corporation gets to make up what they're going to call those people. In the past, when I started in this field, they were mostly called scientific advisors, technical specialists, uh, or the like. Um, now the firms have taken, trying to, I think, kind of elevate um, those positions, uh, have taken, the firms have taken to calling them patent engineers or patent scientists, which I guess makes the title sound more impressive. Um, but those really only mean that you're an engineer or scientist who works in the patent area and has not yet passed the exam. I will tell you that patent agents and patent attorneys hate those new job titles because they think it relatively diminishes their accomplishments of having passed the exam. That this person just called themselves a patent engineer and I'm a patent agent, they sound very similar as opposed to a patent agent versus a scientific advisor or technical specialist, which sounds like a very different thing. Um, so basically, I will tell you, if you've got the appropriate, you know, degrees, technical background that the firm is looking for, that will always be part of the job posting, always part of the job posting. You can apply probably for any job posting except one for a patent attorney. Uh, if, they're, if they're advertising for a patent attorney, they've got something very specific in mind, most likely, that you cannot do unless you've, you know, gone to law school and, and passed a state bar exam. It, for no reason that you just don't have the license to do that. You cannot legally do those things. Um, uh, so, but you can go ahead and apply um, for a patent agent job um, before you pass the exam. Um, but you've probably got a bit of an uphill battle then. Um, but it shouldn't be too hard. If you have the technical background they're seeking, um, you'll be able to show them, look, I've been successful on exams in the past. I have mastered some very difficult and demanding technical uh, uh, knowledge, um, and I'll have no trouble passing the exam. So really, you know, anything for except a patent attorney, as long as you've got the technical background, you should feel fine applying for. That was short and sweet. I hope that's helpful. Uh, again, if you've got any further questions, you can always email me at mdighton.com. M-D-I-G-H-T-O-N at P-L-I dot E-D-U. We're a dot E-D-U because we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, and I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. Uh, uh, if this has kind of piqued your curiosity, the next thing we're going to talk about is the difference between an agent and attorney, you know, whether you should go to law school or not. Uh, and then later about, uh, you know, how the exam works and how you should study for the exam. So I hope I'll see you there if you're still interested. Thanks so much.